morning everybody. Are you all there? Are you waving at me? Who's wearing their pyjamas? <laughs> Nobody. Look, I am. And my slippers, especially. Welcome. I know it's a lovely morning, but we're gonna just do some felt rainbow making, which you, incidentally you could make outside in the sunshine. Welcome to my kitchen this morning. We've moved location. Um, I just thought I'd be near the sink this morning so that I could show you how to actually rinse the felt once it's made. So, have we got any kids joining in this morning? Should I make sure I don't swear? Not that I was going to swear anyway, but I'll make extra doubly special sure that I don't swear, I'll try to anyway. Okay, so, felt rainbows. So here's the little one I made the other day. I only made this little one as a sample really, just to show you the kind of thing we'd be doing this morning. But as you can see, the one that I've started here on my mat is a little bit bigger because I thought we'd make a bigger one. So the kit that I'm using today is our basic felt making rainbow starter kit. And I'll just very quickly show you that before I get going because it's perfect for this and it's actually perfect for kids as well. What you get in here is this rainbow bag of colours. So if I just take it out and show you, you get all of these colours in the kit, um, and that's 100 grams of wool. And then you get the big bamboo mat that I'm using here, a big piece of netting, and it all comes in this rather fetching little bag that you can keep it in and store it away in when you're not using it. So I'm just gonna dump that over there for now, on the cooker hob. <coughs> So let's get going with this. So I've just pulled out the colours that I'm going to use for my rainbow. Obviously there are certain colours that are meant to be in a rainbow, but you've got to have pink in a rainbow, in my opinion. So I've added in a little bit of pink as well. So these are the colours that I'm using here. And then I think the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just quickly show you at the end how to needle felt these little bits on here, although I will add them on as well with the wet felting, but I'm needle felting on top, I've just needle felted the little smiley faces. So let's get cracking, so I want to try and keep this fast paced and um, get through it as quickly as possible. So, I've started off with the red wool and I've already laid that out and then I've done the orange as well just to speed things up a bit. But what I want to show you, especially those of you that are watching that have never made wet felt before, I want to show you how to pull the wool off, okay, because it's really important that you do this correctly. If you use the wool too thickly, it'll be a nightmare trying to rub it all together with the soap and the water. So, watch carefully. This wool has got quite a long handle to it, so the fibres go all the way down to there when I pull them off, okay? So what you need to do is you need to hold it in one hand about sort of six or inches, I was gonna say, so what's that in centimetres, I don't know, 20 centimetres down. And then with the other hand, the hand you write with is the best one to use. If you just see those fibres at the top, you just grab the very, very ends of the fibres and you just release them. Release is a really good word because what you want to do is have them nice and wispy like this and you want them to come off quite easily. What you don't want is to be like really pulling hard. Now if you hold it too high up, you're holding on to them, okay? And if you grab too much, you're holding on to them. So what you're doing is you're just taking off the very, very, very ends of the fibres and just pulling them up gently. Can everyone see that? I'm just gonna come a little bit closer to the camera. So it's really, really fine and wispy. If I hold it up to my top as well, you'll see. Really, really fine and wispy. Question. Jackie Purdy is asking, what is your base, please? My base? I'm assuming she means what Oh, so sorry. Okay, yes, I've gone straight in, haven't I? I'm just working straight onto the mat, Jackie. So the kit that I just showed you, this big mat that's in here, let me just give it that. This big felting mat that's in here, that is what I've just laid out. I've laid it out onto my chopping board and I've literally just got a little miniature towel underneath it to stop it from slipping. That's it. So I'm going straight onto the mat. Um, if you didn't have a mat, you could do it directly onto your worktop or onto a, a surface that's waterproof, but we are going to be using the mat later on to roll the felt. So really you need a bamboo mat to do this. Some people do use bubble wrap, but it's not very effective and it takes much longer to do. 
and it's very slippy and slidey and obviously it's plastic. So these are reusable, these Bambi mats. So it's worth investing in one if you think you're gonna make more felt. So I'm going straight onto there. So um, hopefully everyone's got a handle on how I'm pulling this wool off. It's got to be nice and wispy, okay? So I've started with the red and I've made a nice big arch, okay? And this is gonna determine how big your rainbow will be. Um, the only thing you need to bear in mind and remember is it will shrink. So it's going to shrink by about 20%. So now when I made this Diddy one here, he started off probably about that big, okay? And he shrunk down, okay? And also I've put a backing on to keep it flat when you hang it, so I'll show you that later as well. So I've done the red and I've done the orange. I'm just going to go through the colours now and show you. Is anyone out there watching this actually doing it with me right now or are you all just watching with a view to doing it later. It help, helps me to know that and then I can maybe sort of pace myself accordingly. Anyone say anything? Um, there was a thumbs up a thumbs through up. the screen. Okay, okay. All right, so the next top tip when you're doing the rainbow, obviously when if you've done wet felting before, you'll know that you've got to lay the fibres in a certain direction. I'm gonna do this while I talk. Um, but with the rainbow, you can lay them out obviously just in the rainbow shape, but what I'm doing here, if I lift it up slightly to show you, is I'm overlapping the colours a little bit. So this is important, so don't lay all the colours out with a gap in between them, because if you do that, then they won't all felt together when you uh, get the soap and the water going, and you'll be left with lots of individual separate pieces of felt so obviously we want to turn this into one big rainbow so when you are laying out the fibers make sure that you are always overlapping just a tiny bit okay and then I'm probably going to say that I'm going to go over the fibers twice because I'm pulling it off quite wispy all right and if you just lay down one of these layers it's not going to be thick enough so what we need to do is lay down enough so that it's thick enough for you not to see through to what's underneath it, so that you can't see the bamboo mat and you can't see the other colour that you're overlapping a little bit, okay? So there's my yellow layer done. What comes after yellow in a rainbow? Green, okay. It's funny because I obviously, those of you that follow me will know, I like all the wool in the shop to be laid out in colour, what I call colour order, which is sort of rainbow order. But um, I, I personally always start with white and then yellow and go that way. Um, and I, didn't, I never start with red, so this is all a bit like, hmm, hang on a second. So, <laughs> so what I'm doing now is the green, pulling it off in exactly the same way, okay? And then just overlapping it. So each little piece that I'm pulling off, I'm overlapping, but I'm also overlapping the yellow bit. Can everyone see that okay? Yeah? Any questions so far? Um, Joy Strauss, how much oh, are hi, these Joy. big mats? How much are the big mats? Yeah. And can I buy one here in Natal? And she says I can't. Buy oh, you can't buy oh, one. Oh, you can't buy one. Joy, so. correct me if I'm wrong. Are you in South Africa? Natal. Where's Natal? I don't know, but I recognise Joy's name, and I know she orders from us, but she's abroad somewhere, and I'm trying to remember where that is. Is it South Africa? She's in. It might be. If you Google one. We need a <laughs> quick geography lesson for my family. Whilst we're doing that. Sorry, um, Joy. Uh, <laughs> Karen McDougall. Hello, Gillian. We'll do this later. I okay. hope I can find the flower tutorials. I was working when you did them. Yeah, so the, the flower tutorial How that I did on Thursday is saved on our Facebook feed. I don't know if you're... What, are you asking me from Instagram or from Facebook? Facebook? From Facebook. Yeah, so it's on the Facebook feed. Uh, the Gillian Gladrag one. So if you just scroll back a few posts, you'll see it. And I, I think, I could be wrong here, but I think it's there for all eternity. Um, Natal so, is in South Africa. Natal is in South Africa, I was right. So hi Joy. So basically the answer to your question after we've now fathomed where Natal is, is that the uh, the kit that I was just talking about is 26 95 You can buy the mat separately I can't remember how much it is. I think it's about £15 on our website. But in the kit, you're getting the netting, 100 grams of wool, instructions, and the muslin bag as well. 
just to be clear. Oh, and the other thing is, you can, we do this deal, which is really good, where you can buy this kit that I'm using with my book called Complete Felt Making for just another two pounds. That's the what we call the felt making kit book combo. And that is 28 95 so that's worth getting as well. So now I'm just going to dive straight into some blue after doing my green. Um, if you feel like there's not an awful lot of space left for the middle of your rainbow, uh, you can just sort of like tweak, tweak it all and move it all around a little bit. Obviously you're gonna need less wool as you get to the center of the rainbow compared to where you were at the beginning of the rainbow. So let me just quickly do the blue. And this time I thought I'd fill it in right to the center rather than leaving a gap in the middle like I did with my little one. Um, I mean, obviously when you're wet felting this, it is all going to move around a little bit and it's not going to be perfect. I've seen some um, beautiful crocheted ones um, on the internet that people have made and hung in their windows and on their doors and so on. Um, which do look perfect, but this is going to have a little bit more of a naivety to it, which personally I really love. Um, and also this is perfect to make with kids because it doesn't have to be perfect and it's almost like perfect for children to, to do as a... Are you trying to ask me a question? Oh, you're just scratching your nose. Um, it's perfect for children to do as a little activity uh, when they're bored. I mean, I know it's a beautiful day today, but you could do it outside. Um, and obviously it's a great thing to do when the weather isn't quite so wonderful. Um, and of course, I don't know what the weather's doing in South Africa. It might be, uh, it's probably nice, isn't it? It's usually nice over there. Um, I am just gonna cheat a little bit here and add in a little bit of turquoise blue, you know, because well, why not? In fact, what I should do is just add that in between that blue and that blue. I'm just gonna sort of highlight it a little bit on the blue, just because I can't do anything simply and I have to make it, you know, slightly more embellished than it needs to be. Just adds a little je ne sais quoi to it by adding in that colour. You make, you can probably tell actually, if you can see the kitchen in the background, that is one of my fave colours. So uh, green and like turquoisey bluey colours, I really love. So I'm just gonna add that in there because I think it just adds something to it a little bit like that. And then I'm just, can you all see okay? Can you see on what I'm doing okay? I'm asking you. Well, yeah. yeah I'm pointing okay. the camera in the right direction. No, no, I know. That's but do I need to hold it up is what no, I mean. I you can so. see. All right, so then after the blue, we're going to do some lilac-y colour, purpley colour. Next, like that. So I've got two here again. You know, I couldn't just choose one. So I'm, <laughs> I'm just going to start off with this one. Oh, and by the way, you do get the turquoise colour in, in the pack. You, if you get that kit I was talking about. So you can add that in. Um, the colours might be slightly different in the pack to the ones that I'm using, so I did just quickly pull these out of a bag. So there's my lilac-y colour in the middle there. Let's just speed up a little bit, because my husband's looking a little bit bored. <laughs> and then I'm just going to put some of this colour in as well, which is nice. Oh no, wait, I won't, I won't make it too complicated. And then I'm just gonna make the pink right in the middle there, okay. Gotta have a bit of pink in your rainbow. I know that, you know, it's not really a thing, but poetic license, I would say, let's just, you know, that just adds something to it in my opinion. So a little bit of pink in the middle to finish it off. So I've sort of, created it so that there's almost like a straight line at the bottom of rainbow so it doesn't have that arch in the middle bit okay so what i am going to do actually now is just check that i have got all the colors going down to roughly the same levels i think i have although like i said earlier this does not need to be perfect so um i think it will have a delightfulness about it if it isn't perfect in fact I just don't want any of the colours to sort of disappear so I'm just adding those in now when you wet this down of course it is all going to move around a little bit and change how it looks a little bit uh, so that's the next step of the process I'm going to wet it down so for those of you that have never done wet felting before squeezy bottle squirt of washing up liquid in the bottom okay so I use uh, just eco washing up liquid, but whatever you've got will be fine. Fairy washing up liquid, doesn't matter. A squirt, a tablespoonful roughly, not too much. 
fill it up with lukewarm water. So you need some of that, give it a little sort of mix around. You need a bar of soap, any old soap will do, doesn't matter what soap it is, could be the cheapest soap from the supermarket. And then we're gonna use the netting that came in the kit, although I've got a slightly bigger piece here. And then I've also got a dishcloth, all right? So those are the things I'm gonna use next. So I'm just gonna take the netting, okay? And I'm going to place that over the rainbow. Over the rainbow. And then I'm going to take the soapy water and I'm gonna squidge that all over the top of the rainbow like that. How much do you need? Well, that's a very difficult question for me to answer on video. Um, you kind of just got to get enough onto it so that you can wet all of the fibers through, all right? So now I'm gonna take my dish cloth and I'm going to push the water, the soapy water, through the fibers. I'm just gonna get rid of my big sleeves because I last night I, um, last night I had a couple of incidents with my big sleeves and uh, knocked over a margarita with one of my sleeves and then knocked a plant off the shelf with another sleeve. So uh, just get those out of the way so I don't ruin the rainbow with my sleeves as well. So plenty of water, soapy water on there and what I'm doing now is I'm holding it down and just carefully pushing all the soapy water through the, the fibres, through the wool fibres, all right? So in doing this, you need to try and get rid of all the air in the wool, okay? So you're ending up with just wool and no air. So let me just add a little bit more because I can feel like it's still a bit puffy and there's still air inside. So I'm just gonna do that again. I'm just gonna... So what we're aiming to do here is get all the air out but also make it nice and soapy. And the soapiness is really, really important. So, the more soap you use, the better in a way, although you don't want to create a sort of foaming, frothy mass in front of you. You just need to make sure that it's soapy enough for you to rub together. So, just keep going until you've got all of the, soap, uh, all of the air out of it. Um, and it's as flat as a pancake. If, it, if you sort of press on it and it still feels a little bit puffy, then you probably haven't got enough water on it. So I'm just gonna add a tiny bit more. You want to try and make sure that you don't end up with a little bit of a, a swimming pool situation. You don't want the water sort of splashing onto your feet and creating a massive pool around the area that you're working with. And it does help to just put a towel or a tea towel underneath to prevent that from happening as well. So I'm just gonna keep going with that and just add a tiny bit more. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna grab my bar of soap this is just some olive oil soap that I happen to really love, but like I say, you can use any. I'm just gonna pop that over the top. <clears throat> and the purpose of that is to create a nice sort of sudsy situation like this, okay? So what you should be able to do now is you should be able to write your name in the soap. I'm just gonna get it going a little bit. I'm just gonna put a little bit more onto it like this. Oops. Dressing Dolly asks. Yeah. Uh, Hello, Dressing Dolly. Actually, she, she, she requests you do a peg bag tutorial. Peg bag? Oh, yes, the peg She's bag. Just one. Oh, I see. Right, okay. So, actually, I, well, yes, maybe I will. It depends how long this, this lockdown goes on for. Could go through my whole kit range. We could be here for, for many weeks. So, um, I may do that, but in the meantime, if you want to get started with making it, there's a free uh, video on our YouTube channel that shows you how to make a felt bag. And the peg bag is essentially a felt bag. Um, it's just that the, um, the opening is in slightly different position. Perfect segue. Uh, Faye asks if this will be available on YouTube. Well, actually, yes, because my techno gadget husband is actually now recording this not only on Facebook and Instagram, but <clears throat> also on another system as well, which we are going to be putting onto YouTube. So we'll try and put that on today. I have still got the punch needle one somewhere as well, so I'll see if I can pop that on too. Yeah, because they're, then they're more accessible for some people. I appreciate that. So what I just wanted to show you was see if you can write your name in the soap. And if you can, that means you've got enough um, water on there, okay? It feels like it's really soaking it up. I think it might be because I've got the towel underneath, actually. Um, 
But now the rubbing begins, okay? So now we're going to really rub this. Um, normally, I probably rub it for about 20 minutes. Obviously, I can't do that today, so I'm going to have to cheat a little bit, and I'm going to have to move on more quickly than I would normally. So what, let me just, first of all, let me just talk about the best way to rub felt. The best way to rub felt is with both hands flat onto here, rubbing backwards and forwards with the soapiness as quickly as you can. And the faster you rub it, the quicker it will felt. If you tickle it and like do it half-heartedly, it will take quite a lot longer. So now my daughter's in the garden trying to make me laugh by dancing on the top step. <laughs> come on, come and dance here, Polly. Oh no, she's got all shy now. Uh, now, what happens sometimes when you do start to felt, uh, rub this with the soapy water is some of the fibres come through the net. I don't know if you can see that here. And uh, essentially what they're trying to do is they're trying to felt themselves to the net, which isn't what you want because you don't want the net attached to your rainbow. So just pull those off. Okay, so now I've been just rubbing it for a couple of minutes. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to very carefully peel back the netting, hopefully leaving it all intact underneath. And you can see it started to try and felt itself to the net. I'm just going to remove the net, firstly to prevent that from happening, but secondly, just to check that my rainbow is as I want it. So there's like a sort of small window of opportunity once you start rubbing where you could dive in and just, just move things around a little bit, you know, because with wet felting, everything kind of does its own thing and moves around a bit. And, Sometimes it doesn't quite end up how you want it to. So if you wanted it like really nice and neat uh, and a bit OCD, <laughs> you can come back and just sort of tweak it all. Tweak is a good word. So just making sure that it's kind of all where you want it to be like that. I'm just going to quickly just sort of tidge the, the, the lilac bits of it. But I think that's all fine. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop the netting back on in a slightly different position, okay? I'm just going to add a little bit more of the soapy water and I'm going to keep rubbing again. And I'm just going to carry on rubbing this for a few more minutes, but you would rub it for like 20 minutes or until you can see that all of the fibres are really felted together. And what I mean by that is, if you take the net off and you rub your hand across it, quite briskly, not tentatively, you should be able to see that all of the fibres are staying put, like they're stationary, and they're not swaying around from side to side. So if they're still swaying from side to side, then really you need to rub for longer. And I have to say, it's this rubbing bit that people get bored with and nearly all of the questions I get asked about why the felting hasn't worked properly is due to people not rubbing it for long enough. And they sort of think, oh, surely that must be long enough. And it happens on my courses as well. And I think I can see people getting slightly irritated that um, I've, I've told them they need to rub it for longer. But actually this is like almost the most important bit because once this is rubbed together properly, it becomes a proper piece of fabric that isn't going to fall apart. And then um, the, the next bit where you rinse it and roll it is, is far more effective and you'll end up with a, a much better piece of felt at the end. Having said all that, I am going to cheat slightly now and I'm going to pretend that I've been rubbing it for 20 minutes. And I'm actually just going to move forward because I want to keep the pace up here. I'm going to move forward and I'm going to just turn it over. So normally after 20 minutes, <clears throat> It would be really, really well felt together. You'd rub it and it would all be completely together. So I'm just going to pick this up. As you can see, it is held together enough for me to do this, even after a few minutes. I'm going to turn it over to the back, which looks a bit messier, but still looks like a rainbow, so that's fine. And then I'm just going to pop the net back over the top again and carry on rubbing it. Sorry, this is the most enormous piece of net. So that goes over the top. A little bit more soapy water, which I've now nearly run out of. And then a little bit more of my soap. And off I go again with a little bit more rubbing. Okay, so give it plenty of welly and it will happen a lot, lot faster than if you tickle it. And just make sure that the bits don't all come through the net. So I'm just going to do this for a minute or so longer. I'm guessing if you are actually doing this with me, you can't really be typing questions on your phone because you've got wet, soapy hands. Um, but on Facebook, uh, people did carry on asking questions afterwards, like after it had gone 
been posted onto the feed, so don't feel like you can't ask questions after the event, because that's fine, you can still come on there, and or you can message me on Instagram and ask me. I have been a little bit overwhelmed by messages and emails and so on um, since this all started, so I might take a little bit longer than usual to get back to you, but I will try and do so. Um, right, let's call it a day there. So ordinarily, you would then do another sort of 10 or 15 minutes on the back as well. So altogether, probably I'd say at least half an hour's rubbing on this. Yeah, 20 minutes on one side, 10 minutes on the other side. But I'm now going to cheat a little bit and move on. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and rinse this. I'm hoping it's not going to fall apart. I don't think it will because I know what I'm doing, but I haven't rubbed it for long enough. So I'm going to fold it up to kind of protect it a little bit. I'm going to rinse it under lukewarm water and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to roll it in the mat, okay? So my very clever husband is now going to follow me over to the sink right here. So what I'm doing now is lukewarm water, okay? You don't want any extremes of temperature, so you don't want it really hot, you don't want it really cold because you don't want to suddenly shock it. You want to just do this slowly and in, you know, at your own speed, as it were. So. You're almost replicating what happens in the washing machine when you accidentally shrink a jumper, yeah? But you're doing it by hand. So, water, friction, heat, soap. Um, so I've got it folded up to protect it. I am literally just showing it the water. So you don't have to fill the sink up with water. And then do that a few times, but you do need to wring it, okay? Squeeze it, wring it. So you can see why it needs to be rubbed properly. Uh, otherwise, you, you do run the risk that it might fall to bits. You're getting most of the soap out, not necessarily all of it, but most of it, and then squidging all the water out, okay, oh, and then I'm slowly gliding back over here, and now I'm going to show you how to roll it in the bamboo mat, okay. So what you could do is you could rinse your bamboo mat as well, because it will be a little bit soapy, but I'm not going to bother with that. Um, lay it out in front of you, the right way round, okay. Make sure it's nice and flat. I've got my little towel underneath to stop it from slipping. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to roll this up nice and tightly. Tightly, really important you do it tightly. If you roll it up loosely, it's much, much more difficult to do this. And then rolling it backwards and forwards 20 times. Another great use for this mat is to make felt cobweb scarves. And that's another tutorial I'm thinking about doing because I know that interests a lot of people. So if you were, if you did get this kit, this mat, you could use this for the felt cobweb scarves uh, because it's uh, 1.8 meters long by 600 centimeters wide, I think, off the top of my head. Uh, 20 times backwards and forwards. Then I'm opening it up again. There's my rainbow. So it's looking rather splendid and way bigger than the other one I made like four times the size. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it 90 degrees clockwise. Always go clockwise, then you will remember where you are. The reason I'm doing this is because it shrinks in the direction that I'm rolling it in, okay? So now I'm going to roll it up again, nice and tightly, and do another 20. Okay. And then I'm going to open it up again, 90 degrees clockwise. So, so now it's shrunk that way a little bit, only a tiny bit. You probably wouldn't have even, I can see that it's just evened that out a little bit now actually. All the time you're doing this, it's quite malleable. So you can pull it gently uh, to reshape it if you feel like it's gone a bit wonky. Uh, I'm probably gonna wait to do that a little bit actually because I didn't rub mine for long enough. Uh, so rolling it up again, another 20 in this direction. So now my rainbow's upside down in front of me inside the mat. And this is the fulling process. This is where the bamboo mats are pushing against one another um, to harden and shrink the felt. And it shrinks in the direction you're rolling it in, which is quite interesting. So now it's gone slightly squished that way and it's a bit longer that way. I'm just going to uh, even that out by now doing it this way as well, okay. Good for your arm muscles, bit of a workout. Put the music on. 
Um, interestingly, my Apple Watch always thinks I've run a marathon after I've done some felting because my hand's been going backwards and forwards. Other watches are available. Other watches are available. <laughs> Uh, so now I'm back to the beginning again, okay, and now what I'm going to do is turn it over. So what we're doing here is 20 rolls in each direction on both sides, almost like north, north, south, east, north, east, south and west as you go around on both sides though. So now I'm on the second side. I'm just going to speed this up a little bit. Any questions? Because everyone like busy rolling. I'm imagining people at home busy rolling rainbows. They're probably all lying in the garden, some there's, there's a lot of love for the scarf out there. Oh, is there? Okay, that's cool. It's interesting to know that. So I put on my uh, grid picture yesterday and onto Facebook as well, whether people would like me to do a weaving with wool tops tutorial. Um, but the other one that I had in my mind was the cobweb scarf too. I think. I'll do a poll maybe and see what people would prefer, but I think it would be quite a long tutorial to do the scarf from beginning to end, so what I might do is do a little sample of a cobweb scarf so that we could do it quickly and then you could go off and make a, a full sized one. Another question? Lynn SMCC123. Hi Lindsay. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I know who that is. <laughs> can you add glittery fibres? You can! I didn't even think of that, Lindsay. Well done. Lindsay works in the shop, so she's thinking about all the um, Angelina glitter that we sell. I didn't actually bring any home with me, stupidly, but yeah, that would look amazing in the rainbow. Oh, why didn't I think of that? Yeah, so basically we sell this stuff called Angelina, which you may have heard of. Uh, some of it's heat bondable and um, you can trap it into the fibres and then it kind of sparkles a little bit. I've actually got the felted hat of mirth here uh, that we, uh, we use at home when people are, are being grumpy and um, just to digress just for a second and the felted hat of mirth has actually got some uh, Angelina sparkles in it. I don't know if you can see them sparkling, can you? Where's that? Not really. So there's some silvery ones trapped in there. So if someone gets in a, in a grump, they have to wear the felted hat of mirth for at least five minutes um, until they're out of their grump. And um, that's why it's called the felted hat of mirth. Also very good for camping, not that I go camping, uh, because you can put it over your eyes and your ears, and then you can't hear people undoing their sleeping bags. Anyway, I digress. That's the felted hat of mirth. So now we're back to the beginning with this. What I'm going to do with this now is I'm going to do a second rinse. And now I've done all that rolling, it's much more robust and it's much better held together. So don't really need to fold it up, but I'm going to anyway. I'm going, oh, sorry, cameraman, come on. Back to your station, pay attention. Okay. <laughs> back to the sink. So this time, hot water. Obviously, don't burn your hands as hot as you can bear it. It's going to shrink the felt, but it's also going to make it far more robust, okay? So now I'm going to get all of the soap out. It's important to get all the soap out by the end. So really give it a good old rinse in the hot. <clears throat> you can be much rougher with it now. You know, it's not going to fall apart. It's really well held together. Good old squidge. Lots of lovely hot water. Ouch, that's really hot. And now, yes. Ben Curtis, age Hello. six. <laughs> ben. Hello, asks, Ben. Should an adult be involved with this hot water? <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, if you're doing any of this with a child of, say, under 10, maybe, you would be supervising that child. So, Ben, make sure you don't do it without the help of somebody um, supervising your hot water because uh, we don't want any burnt fingers. Make sure your mum or your dad or someone else you know that's in the house who's an adult can help you with that. So I'm now gone to freezing cold water and I'm now just really giving it a good old rinse in the freezing cold water, making sure all the soap's gone, giving it a good old final ring. Okay, I'm about to walk back again, cameraman. Pay attention. And now I'm going back to the mat and we're going to just do the rolling all over again, okay? So back to the mat. As you can see, or maybe you can't, I don't know, it has shrunk. And it's really that hot water rinse that does the shrinking. So now I'm going to just do what I was mentioning earlier and give it a little bit of a, a pull around. So I'm just going to reshape it slightly. 
and make sure it doesn't look too wobbly. Um, so if some of your colours are bigger than other colours or your top, in particular the top red bit has got a bit wonky, now's the time you can reshape it. So now I'm just going to pull my mat back up there and I'm going to roll it all over again. So it's another 20 rolls in each direction. I'll do it too fast while I'm chatting. Any more questions? Because we're nearly at the end. I'm just going to quickly show you a little bit of uh, needle felting at the end if you want to put the clouds on. Let's do it that way. As well. So always turning it 90 degrees clockwise. And this really makes it so much more robust, all this rolling the bamboo mat. So it'll be ready to hang in your window and it's not going to fall apart. I'm just doing it slightly faster than you should. So it should be 20 rolls in each direction, okay? I feel like it's getting a little bit long and thin, so I'm going to go that way. Um, one question that no one's asked, which I'll answer anyway, is would you cut it to shape it at the end? My answer to that is always no, definitely not. I hate cutting felt because you end up with this kind of weird cut edge and I think the beauty of it is the is the finished edge actually so that's why I'm sort of showing you how to shape it a little bit rather than cut it I mean it's tempting to just take the scissors to the bottom maybe which I suppose you could if you really wanted to I'm actually now just deciding just to roll it this way because I know that it's shrinking in the direction I'm rolling it in and it's getting a bit long and thin so I'm just going to roll it a couple more times this way and I'm going to quickly show you how to needle felt on some clouds underneath if you want to. And now I'm just gonna turn it round that way and just roll it once more this way as well. Okay, so um, you can make it any size you like. Obviously this mat is enormous, you can make a giant one if you wanted to. Um, you're only limited by the width of the mat. Uh, if you do make something enormous and you need to roll it and it won't fit in lengthways, then you can fold things in half to roll them. That's another question. Um, and there we go, that's pretty much it, okay? It's not quite as felted as I like it to be, but I've been doing it super fast. Let me just quickly talk you through needle felting on some clouds if you wanted to, if you wanted to, and if you've got some needle felting equipment, a piece of foam for some felting needles, you want a 38 gauge star felting needle, that comes in our basic needle felting kit. Um, or we do sell a naked needle felting kit which is unpacketed with no wool and is literally just the, uh, the foam and the needles and a, and a multi-needle tool. Did you have questions? A couple of, couple of questions. Yeah. Um, Chilcott Kate, if you wanted a curve at the bottom rather than a straight edge, yes, like would this. that work? Yes, like this Kate? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's the little one I did. I did curved and then it works okay. better with the little clouds actually if you do that. I've done a straight one here just as an alternative really. But we could still put some clouds on at the bottom. Yes? Uh, Sir Daz. Yes. Um, he's with Joey Essex who missed the beginning and wants to know <laughs> where do the rainbow coloured sheeps live? <laughs> you don't need well, to that no, one, okay. Do. But. Um, there aren't any rainbow coloured sheep, uh, Joey, Essex and Daryl. Um, however, luckily we do dye all the wool ourselves into over 70 different colours. So although the sheep are always white when they're sheared, it's not a problem. We can, we can still make all these lovely colours uh, and we sell it all online for you, Joey. So thanks for um, asking that question. Ange Garwood. Hello, Would you suggest putting Wonderweb on the back to make it really stiff? Well, you could, yes, absolutely. But I was actually going to show you how you could just get a piece of ready-made felt and stick it to the back, because that's what I've done here. So I've just got some normal pink felt that I had at the studio, cut out the same shape, stuck it on with our Gemtac glue that we use. Um, incidentally, there's more of this arriving uh, on Monday and more stiff and stuff because I know a lot of you were trying to get hold of that. Um, yeah, so that's what I've done to stiffen it. But if you've got some Wonderweb or some Violene interfacing or something else you prefer, yes, good idea because otherwise it might be a bit floppy. Kerry's up. Mm -hmm. Can you go through the direction of rolling and shrinkage again? So it shrinks in the direction you're rolling it in. Hang on then, let me just take it off here. So if I'm rolling it this way, it's going to get, it's going to shrink that way. 
it's going to make the, the rainbow narrower and taller. If, I, if I'm rolling it this way, it's going to shrink that way, so it's going to make the rainbow shorter and wider. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, so here's the little clouds look. So these I'm doing with the needle felting. You could add them in with your wet felting when you lay the wool out. So you could lay out the wool for your rainbow, um, and then you could just literally add some, some little white bits at the bottom, but I didn't do that. So if you've got the needle felting equipment, it kind of, it's kind of nicer to do it with the needle felting if you can, because you can make it more cloud-like, and you can make it a little bit 3D. So that's what I did with this one. So they're a little bit, they sort of standing proud, and they're a bit more fluffy. And then obviously you can add in the little faces as well. So I've just laid out a little bit of the white. Actually, I'm using a colour called Cloud. It's not the creamy white we've got. It's like a very, very, very pale grey, which is perfect for this. Um, and you want to lay out, out enough of it so that you can no longer see through it. So you don't want to be able to see the, uh, the foamy bit underneath. Okay. Oh, there's a random stray bit of blue there. So just keep stabbing. If you've never done needle felting before, that's a felting needle. It's got little barbs in it which entangle the wool as you stab them in and out. Okay. And it's those little nicks that are important that they go through the fibres into the foam. It will attach to the foam a little bit, but you can just tease it off every now and again, put it down a slightly different place. So that's one side there. If you wanted to do the little face, that's just a tiny bit of black wool and some tiny little eyes, just using tiny little bits. So just stab in one eye there, and then another little bit over here. One eye there, and then if you want to do it, obviously it's got to have a lovely big smile. Then we're just going to use a tiny bit of wool. You probably can't see what I'm doing very well. Like that. Okay, so I'm literally stabbing very, very gently. It's important to keep the felting needle upright and uh, not do it at an angle and not stab too violently. Although I'm sure living with your family is all cramped into one house, you are all tempted to stab violently. Make sure you don't because you will break your felting needle and also keep these out of the reach of children. So Ben Curtis, you wouldn't be allowed to use these without the uh, supervision of an elder, adult either. Not recommended. They are very, very sharp. Also keep your fingers out of the way because it will hurt if you stab your finger with a felting needle and you will draw blood and we don't want any more visits to A&E at this difficult time. Loved by others. Just bought the kit Yay! and glitter. Thank Never you. felt it before. Okay. Didn't order the needles or foam block. Uh oh. Can I add to my order, please? Uh, kind of. Yeah, when did you order it? I presume she's just ordered Oh, fine, it. okay. All right, so yeah, do the next order with the needles and the foam block, but use the word local at checkout and it won't charge you any shipping. Then drop me an email saying what you've done and we will try and make that work for you tomorrow. Um, we, we have been really inundated with on, online orders, we do have like a skeletal staff working at the shop but um, we have been managing to make it all work and marry up so far. We've had a, you know, a bit of a problem with the Royal Mail taking slightly longer than they normally do so bear with us on that but yes, use the, word, use the code local and you can add to your order as long as we know who you are and which orders need to be um, compiled together. Hmm? Combined. Sorry, combined together, sorry. So that's it really. So that's how you would do the little cloudy bits on there. You just need to keep stabbing those until they feel like sturdy and significant enough to um, hold together really. So there's no soap and no water involved in the needle felting bits. Um, I haven't really talked much about needle felting today. I did more so in my felt flower tutorial, but it's great when you use it for like sculptural work, like making little animals and, and that kind of thing. But it's also brilliant for adding little details that you wouldn't be able to otherwise with wet felting, like this little face, for example, which you'll probably go all skew with if you just try to do it with the wet felting. Although you can. So if you don't want to buy the needle felting stuff, you could do all the wet felting. Um, just before I finish, if you don't want to buy this massive net and um, and that bag and the kit that I showed you here, uh, you could do this with our mini kit, although uh, it, obviously the rainbow would be a lot smaller, But and this doesn't come with any wool, so you would also need to buy yourself some bags of wool. We do sell lots of 25 gram bags of wool, which are like very small pieces if you just wanted to do like a little diddy one like I made. 
Um, but this is a really good investment if you want to do more felting, especially with children, like some flat pieces, or if you're thinking you might want to do the scarf. Um, there is a wet felting tutorial for flat pieces on YouTube already if you want to look at that. So that's it for now. Any more questions before I go? No. Fabulous. Thanks everybody. Thanks for tuning in. I will be posting shortly about what I'll be doing next and when I'll be doing it. Bye for now.